Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Discover Your Local Library series. Um, this week, we are featuring staff from May Memorial Library. And our goal for each week of this series is to teach you something that you might not have known about your local library in Alameda County. We have some great events planned, um, and I will share the flyer again towards the middle of this event so that you can write down what the different weeks will include. Hopefully, you'll tune in with us every week um, because tonight is going to be phenomenal and each week after is going to be phenomenal as well. So with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to the, uh, the branch manager of the May Memorial Library in Burlington, North Carolina, Erica Hill. All right. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Sharia. Um, again, my name is Erica Hill, and I am the branch manager for the May Memorial Library in Burlington, North Carolina. And just to kind of give you guys an overview of Alamance County Public Library, we're composed of four physical branches, which is May Memorial, which is our largest branch. We have Medbin Public Library, which is obviously located in Medbin, the Graham Public Library, which is located in Graham, and the North Park Library, which is located in the Mako Bigelow Center, which is not too far from um, May. Um, and then we have our outreach services department, which is our base, basically our um, mobile cafe and our mobile library. Our mobile library just got up and running probably about a year ago and um, is basically a library on wheels. Everything that you can access from the physical library, we just put it on to our mobile library and we head out and connect with different community organizations um, to allow for access to the same resources and services. Um, so as Sharia said, for the Discover Your Local Library series, we have a lot of good things lined up, but today we're going to be doing a historical tour. We actually aren't going to go into the physical library, but we do have our local history and reference librarian, Lisa Coburn, who has been in pool with ACPL for a very long time, um, I believe 30 plus years. So she has a lot of knowledge about the history of Alamance County, but specifically um, um, the May Memorial Library for today. Um, so you'll spend about 25 minutes with her learning about the history of um, May Memorial. And then we'll do a five minute break where you'll kind of learn um, about different library resources and programs and services um, through like a little commercial break. And then after that, you'll spend about um, 30 minutes with me and Sharia doing a Q and A uh, to answer some of your must die, you know, all the questions that you want to know about um, May Memorial and ACPL. So um, I will hand it over to Lisa and she will get started with the historical tour. Good evening, folks. Thank you for having me here tonight. Um, that I just wanted to give you kind of a background about the library. Um, there have been library services in Alamance County uh, open to the public through starting in about the 1920s or so. Um, May Memorial is not that old. We celebrate 1938 as our founding date, but um, back in the day, uh, a lot of the public schools had uh, libraries that were open to the public as well as the school children. And one of them was in the Broad Street School and the Fisher Street School and one other school. And they would have hours on, you know, after school and on Saturdays for the uh, public to uh, get books as well. Um, those libraries, um, I don't have a good illustration of that because all I have in terms of pictures are kind of grainy uh, photographs from uh, old school annuals. So I won't share that with you, but I will say that the late thirties was when um, most of the municipalities uh, here opened public libraries. Actually, the first one was what you're seeing on the screen. It's the Mebbin Public Library. Um, it predates May Memorial by a little bit. Uh, their official opening date was in about 1936. And 
what um, spurred library services over there. There was, there was a women's club, a women's book club that was very interested in spearheading a library and they were instrumental in the fundraising for the Nebin Public Library. And um, Mebbin is, you know, a small kind of bedroom community on the um, Alamance Orange County line. And uh, they're very interesting in that uh, they can tell you're not from there if you pronounce the name wrong. So if you say Mebane, they know you're not local. That uh, what you see in front of you is the Mebbin Public Library, and it's gone through several different, you know, buildings. One was a formal commercial and farmers bank, and that's the one you're seeing from the 1940s and 50s. Um, that um, after that, uh, it was in a uh, municipal building uh, close to the railroad tracks that go through there that parallel Highway 70. And then right now they're in the former Dixie Yarns building, which is a former textile building. And the architecture in there is real interesting. You can, if you go in that library, you can still see hardwood floors with uh, little uh, pieces of metal in the floor that were never removed. They were the things that kind of anchored the big textile machines, you know, from back in the day when it was a textile mill. This next picture is of the May Memorial Library. Um, what you see in the top picture is probably from, you know, 1938 or so when the library opened. And we say that the town of Burlington was really put on the map by the railroad and by textiles, the town itself more so by the railroad, but certainly the library by textiles because the main benefactor of May Memorial Library was a man named William Henry May, and he had daisy hosiery and uh, May hosiery, and you'll still see a huge smokestack near the lab core headquarters building in downtown Burlington, and that was part of the May hosiery facility, and it has the words May on it, but he was a wealthy industrialist, and um, his uh, he had a wife and two sons and he took his wife on an extensive across the world trip in about 1935 or so and they visited India and Egypt and you know just all over the place but unfortunately she caught pneumonia and she died in Cairo Egypt and he was, you know, devastated uh, when he came back and he wanted to think of something to do to memorialize her. And what he uh, hit upon was buying the old federal post office um, for the uh, community of Burlington and setting it up as a better public library. So the library had been in rented storefronts up until then. Um, and what he did was give $15,000 and then he um, started a fundraising campaign in the community to, for folks to match that amount of money. And that sounds like a very, what they would call small or paltry amount of money in today's dollars, but you know, it would be, upwards of $350,000, you know, in current money. So it was a substantial gift to the library. And so that's why it's the May Memorial Library. And to this day, we have photographs of Mr. W.H. May and his wife up in our children's room. And I'll talk a little bit more about them later. Um, they were done by a famous artist who was, um, renowned for doing magazine covers that this gentleman um, was just as famous as like Norman Rockwell back in the day. And we'll come on with our next picture. Um, this is the opening gala at May Memorial Library. You can see there are a lot of dignitaries here and all the ladies are wearing, you know, fancy long dresses, but um, that I kind of take issue with how they decorated the place because it was the 30s, but some of the um, decorating from the 1920s was still in vogue. And literally when this building opened, um, they had redone the old post office in what I would describe as poison apple green and Chinese red. 
say then whenever we nick the walls around here, there's this horrible green paint that shows up underneath. Um, you can't see it from this old black and white photo, but they thought that was the height of fashion back in the 30s. And the Mays had also brought some nice furnishings for the library, like they collected a marble statue on their trips and it stood in the library for a long time until someone knocked it over and broke the hand. Okay. Oh, I can uh, show you in here. The marble statue is the crouching Venus on your um, right, I guess it would be. Um, it's uh, Carrera marble um, and was something the Mays acquired in their travels. And then you'll see a big uh, grandfather clock that's kind of off in the center of the room. Um, that stands in the library to this day. It was given to the library about 1945 by a gentleman called Colonel Eugene Holt. And what makes him significant is that he was the grandson of industrialist E.M. Holt. Uh, you've probably heard of him because there's an E.M. Holt Elementary School and I think there's an E.M. Holt Fire Station and he was really the kind of uh, oldest textile magnet in the county uh, that all of the uh, textile mills were things that he either founded or that his sons had some hand in. But this clock is very significant because um, it dates from probably somewhere between 1900 and 1905. And it's a Seth Thomas clock and it has um, cathedral chimes and a um, sun and moon phase indicators up at the top. And I think it was probably purchased for around $400, which was big money in that time, but it's worth thousands of dollars today. And I saw the most precious thing that today, a little girl who was a toddler went up to it and started looking at it and just saying, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And she was so cute. And this is an example of one of our outreach vehicles. Well, we've had probably five to six of them in the career of the library. Um, the first ones were more like just regular trucks outfitted with glass doors that opened. Um, and so you couldn't walk onto them. This I believe represents a stop at Truett store in Elon College uh, because uh, the folks of Elon don't have a public library that there's just the university there and so no children's books and things. Um, so this was a community stop, probably judging from the clothing in the 1940s or so at Elon and the folks are picking books after they've opened the um, doors and uh, windows. Um, future bookmobiles were much more modern. The library acquired one in the mid fifties that um, came from Chicago and was more like you traditionally think of a bookmobile where you walk onto the vehicle and uh, there are shelves along the uh, perimeter. Uh, here is the um, 1950s um, bookmobile. It was acquired from some company whose name I can, can't pronounce, something like Gerstenslager, but they, the employees drove all the way out to the Midwest to pick it up and bring it back. And what you'll see um, there is they are right in front of the court square in Graham. Um, and they're, you know, in front of this new bookmobile that they're very proud of. Um, the man on the right is the bookmobile driver. I believe his name was Edwin something, but the lady in the middle is very significant. Her uh, name was Miss Evelyn Parks, and she was associated with the library here for years and years, 25 or 30 years. She started as a professional librarian here in 1949 and then stayed probably till the late 70s, um, that she was kind of an old school type librarian of the Shishing variety, but she was also very um, professional, but she wanted to know that women had their hearts in being librarians. And back in the day, um, you know, 
you're not allowed to ask personal questions uh, anymore in interviews, but she would always ask women whether they intended to start a family because she wanted people who were dedicated to their career. But uh, she was the original professional librarian in um, Alamance County and she has long since passed on. But uh, she also, uh, it was under her watch that the library became a regional library that for some 30, 35 years or more, the library had a um, contractual arrangement with Chatham County to our south where the two libraries were operated as one and there were three additional branches as part of our library cooperative. And that went from about 1962 to well into the 2000s. But uh, she at one point was the lone professional librarian supervising a staff of paraprofessionals. And this is an example of a story time upstairs in the library. And you can tell that it's kind of hot because it's the second floor of the library. Um, I believe um, that, um, and the windows are open and no central air and everything that um, it was back when people were more easily entertained and did not, you know, um, expect a lot of uh, audiovisual type stuff in their story times, but uh, the lady giving the story time is Miss Blanche McDade, and um, she was a children's employee here for a long time, but you can see some of the little kids are, you know, wearing as little clothing as possible because of how hot it is, you know, overalls with no uh, undershirt and things like that. This is kind of an example of our current library, and I apologize for the glare that um, in about 2000, um, the library expanded by half again as much. So, you know, double the floor space at least. And what happened was they took the old uh, original post office building that Mr. May had given and then kind of uh, constructed a breezeway or atrium to connect it to a building called Colonial Furniture. And that was a building that had been given to the library by the Gantt family who are also prominent in textiles. They're the owners of Glen Raven. Um, but um, those two buildings were kind of uh, connected together by this high ceilinged breezeway and um, the furniture company uh, started out as a Sears building. So when people come see me in the history room, I've had several of them look around and say, I bought my washer and dryer from this room because they had come to Sears to get their appliances. But um, you can see that um, much bigger substantial service desks, um, a lot of... Um, kind of lighting toward the ceiling, uh, more modern uh, furniture that would accommodate uh, technology more easily, um, that type of thing. But all of this happened in the year 2000. So it's been 22 years since the library last expanded. And we do have some space in our basement and our, um, attic type place or second floor, but they're not load bearing. They won't um, bear the weight of books. So we're not unable to expand to those two locations right now, although we could use a little extra meeting room space. And this is another example of the library. And if you'll like hold it a little bit lower, um, I'll see if I can get, um, yeah, the picture above the clock is Mrs. Uh, May. Uh, her name was uh, Watkins May and she's the one uh, that the library was uh, named in memory of. And that's one of the photos that still, uh, is on display in the children's room um, 
and the artist was a man named uh, William Haskell Coffin, and he was very well known for illustrating um, magazine covers. Uh, a lot of them are from magazines that, you know, are no longer in existence today, things you might not um, even have heard of, things like um, Red Book and Saturday Evening Post and um, publications that have gone out of existence, but um, that he came and um, got wealthy folks to sit for him while he did their oil portrait. And I think he had to do Mrs. Mays from her photograph because by that time she was deceased. But uh, you can see the library at this point is decorated for Christmas. And I think that's sometime in the 1980s based on who I see in the picture. But um, th this is definitely the old part of the building that was the post office. And what's most interesting about the old part of the building is that there's still a great steel type walk in safe down in the bottom floor where the postal workers kept all their, you know, valuable shipments and things. And if there's ever a storm, that's where I'm going to end up because it's like almost indestructible down there. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions? I might talk a little bit about some of the prominent features inside the library that we're not gonna see um, that um, our landscaping outside is kind of unique. We have a big old cedar tree back in our courtyard that's been there since the 1920s. And I think it's on a giant tree registry but it's what's called a huge Deodora cedar. And people ask us about that tree all the time uh, because we do some outdoor programming out there. And Deodora cedars are not native to around here. They're from um, like uh, Asia somewhere, but this particular one got decorated as a Christmas tree back in the uh, 1950s until it kind of outgrew uh, that stage of its life. And right now it pretty much dominates our entire patio. Uh, but I know it's been there at least since the library property belonged to the Gantt family because um, that people say they remember playing under it in the 1920s. The other thing that's significant in the library that I don't have a photo of, but you can go on our website and probably see is we have a lot of carousel themed art here because Burlington is known as the home of the carousel festival. And so there's a big old mural in our children's room by David Nance uh, on the theme of the carousel. And kids love to stand in front of it because um, it, shows a carousel horse uh, being ridden by two children um, in front of a backdrop of clouds. And all of the clouds have hidden animals kind of woven into the background. So you can stand there and look and see what you see in terms of there's ostriches and uh, you know, a lot of small mammals and things like that. So people like to look at the clouds and see how many animals they can pick out. We also have a, quite a collection of needlework that was done on the theme of the carousel that was given to us by a women's group. And actually one of our little programming rooms used to have all that needlework in it and it was called the carousel room. But um, Burlington's very proud of the antique dental carousel at the city park. You may have visited there and ridden on it. And so we have several things that have carousel themes. There's even a um, carousel horse decorated with pages from uh, books out in our uh, front uh, garden right in front of the atrium window. And it was a public art project a good many years ago. And at one time there were some of these carousel horses throughout Burlington, like in front of the Times News newspaper building. But I believe that maybe May Memorial has the last existing carousel horse in town. Uh, and it's a struggle to keep people from climbing on it. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was very, very informative. I had no idea who the memorial was named after. So I greatly enjoyed learning today. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. So we are going to take a brief break. 
I'm going to let Lisa and Erica get situated for our the next part of our session, and I'm going to talk to everybody about some literacy resource highlights. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Everybody bear with me. I'm going to share my screen. And I think we have a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to give Facebook a second to catch up with me. All right. So as you all know, this is the Discover Your Local Library series, and we have an event planned for every Wednesday this month. All the events will be on Wednesday from 6.30 till 7.30, but they'll probably end a little bit early. So this first week is May Memorial and we did a tour and we're going to talk about how to get a library card in just a little bit with Erica Hill. Next week, we're gonna learn all about North Park. So I know that you all heard North Park referenced twice, uh, once by Erica and once by Lisa in their portions of the, the beginning part of this episode. And we're going to learn more about the library at North Park and just different activities that exist at North Park that people can participate in. Um, on the 15th, we're going to learn about the mobile library, which you also heard both Erica and Lisa talk about. And so we're actually going to get to see the mobile library and talk to the mobile librarian to learn more about what's there, what's available, and how you can request additional things, even how you can, um, how you can request that you be part of their route. The week after that, we're going to learn about library resources for marginalized communities. And we're also going to learn about little known facts for each of our libraries for the very last week. And we're going to have representatives from all of our local libraries on the Zoom to talk to us about different things that their libraries have, different resources that you all can find there and what they're most excited about that's upcoming at their library. Um, I did not give a shout out to our sponsors, so I will take the time to do that now. The sponsors of the Discover Your Local Library series are the African American Cultural Arts and History Center, Alamance Achieves, the Alamance County Public Libraries, Burlington Housing Authority, CityGate Dream Center, Elena and Jean Books, Genesis Child Development Center, Latinx Ed, and This Woman's Work. I also wanted to talk to you all about a literacy resource highlight. So you all, if you paid attention last summer when we did the virtual reading series, you know that I love me a good literacy resource highlight. So Alamance Achieves has some wonderful information on their website, and the title of this page is Resources for Learning at Home. Initially, it was for those who were uh, doing remote learning because schools were closed due to COVID, but there's still a lot of great information there, even though we're back in school. So you can find information there on literacy and language arts, math, science, engineering, and technology, as well as art and movement. And they're even broken down by category and age group. So you can see um, information for kids that are under school age, those in elementary school, those in middle school, and those in high school. And that website is on the screen, but it's www.alamanceachieves.org forward slash learning slash resources. Also, make sure that you sign up for summer reading with the Alamance County Public Libraries. Regardless of your age, you can sign up and get rewarded for the reading you do this summer. Each branch is offering fun, free programs throughout the summer, and you can register and learn more by going to alamancelibraries.readsquared.com. And again, I will stay on this screen for just a minute so that you all can see the website, but also know that you can go to the Alamance County Public Library's Facebook page to get additional information. And the summer reading dates are going to be June 13th through August 13th. Also, here's another um, bit of information about the mobile library. So starting on Monday, June 13th, the library will be back in rotation and they will have a brand new summer schedule. So make sure that you're paying attention to the website and to Facebook so that you can learn more about when it's back on the road and what that route will be. And if you look in the bottom corner, you'll see kind of what the mobile library looks like. Um, and I've been on the mobile library. It's got a ton of books and other resources and materials. So I definitely encourage you to, to check it out. There are going to be some new stops this year. So um, it might be closer to you than it has been in the past. So just make sure to look out for that route. And again, that starts on June 13th. Make sure that you're following the public libraries on Facebook and um, on Instagram. So Facebook, I've dropped that link in the chat. I've also dropped the link um, in the comments for the, uh, the actual website for the Alamance County Public Libraries. 
And then you can also find them on Instagram at, at Alamance Libraries. So they are on various social media platforms and they have a wealth of information on their website. I've put a screenshot of what the Facebook page looks like so that you know you're looking at the right page before you hit that like button. And lastly, the virtual reading series will be back, but it will be just for the month of June. And so starting this Saturday at 11 a.m., we'll have Charlita Hatch. The week after that, we'll have Crystal McLean, who was with us last year, but has written another book and is going to be back this year. We'll also have Adria Theodore on the 18th, and on the 25th, we'll have Latanya Butler. So make sure to tune in each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for the Discover Your Local Library series, and each Saturday at 11 a.m. for the virtual reading series. Um, everything will be shown on my Facebook page, which is Sharia Denise, and you are welcome to share the videos, to save the videos, and I will be uploading some of them to YouTube, so they'll be accessible there as well. And I am going to give Erica Hill just a few more minutes to come back with us, and then we will get started on the Q&A. Say her name, and she appears. Hello. <laughs> okay, I am, I am back. You are back. And so we are going to get right into the question that we have from the community. All right, so you ready, Erica? I'm ready. I'm gonna take it easy on you, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, so remind us again how many libraries there are in the Alamance County Public Library System. Yes, ma'am. So we have four physical branches. Again, May Memorial is the largest branch. It's where we house admin, our outreach department, our passport services department, um, and our you know general, general May Memorial staff. Um, we have our Grand Public Library, Mebbin Public Library, North Park, which is located in the Mako Bigelow Center, and um, our Outreach Department, which houses our mobile cafe, which basically goes out in the community and gives different um, community communities access to internet. Um, and then our mobile library, which like I said, got on the road probably about a year ago, which is basically a library on wheels. You can check out place holes, all of that good stuff um, as you would for the physical library. And so I'm glad that you referenced both of those because this is where I get to tell our community that the mobile cafe and the mobile library are two different things. Yes, you can get two very different services from them. And I know there was a little bit of confusion about that. So thank you for explaining it. Absolutely. And wanting to add one more thing. Also with the um, mobile cafe, um, you can basically get free books. You don't check out the books. You don't place holes for the books. Um, it gives you access to like giveaway books when they go into the community as well. Oh, well, did y'all hear that? Because she said free books. So she is speaking my language. I just want to make sure y'all heard that. Okay. So uh, the next question we got from the community is what is your favorite section of the main memorial library? Um, I would have to say my favorite section is the children and teen section. Um, it's always evolving. Um, in the children's section, you have where you can do the scavenger hunt, the passive programs. Um, it's just where kids can come and hang out. And just recently, probably about a year ago, we added a um, teen computer section, um, which you know is still growing. A lot of teens don't know about it yet. So here I am plugging it in. If you have teenagers, they can come and use um, the teen computers they were used to using in the children's computers, which didn't give them, you know, like their own identity, their own space. So um, the teen section is, like I said, we're, it's always evolving. We're trying to make it a place where everyone feel, well, teens feel comfortable and safe, where they could come out and hang out at the library. Um, so those are, that, I have a, a soft spot for youth and kids. So that is my favorite section of the library. And then my second favorite se section is the periodical section, because it's where we have our comfy chairs. It's, um, it overlooks the courtyard where you can read your magazines, your newspapers. It's like the center of the library. So you can pretty much see everything from that, that section. Our um, Spanish collection, DVDs, fiction. It's, it's the center of the library. And it's where a lot of our patrons come and kind of hang out. So that's my second favorite spot. Okay, so can you tell us about Story Walk? Story Walk. So that happens at various locations so like Black History Month, African American History Month. Um, we had it where it was at all of our branches, but um, 
Risha Bigelow, she is the um, librarian who kind of puts the story walks together. And basically it's what it is, it's a story and you kind of go through the community or the library. I know at May we do hours in the library where you can start at the beginning of the book and kind of walk your way through the book through either a community organization or the library. Um, and Risha, she tends to pick a lot of good titles um, that can be used for that story walk. Um, so that's that. Wonderful. Shout out to Risha Bigelow, doing amazing things. I see you, Risha. Um, so our next question is, what resources at Maine Memorial Library are often overlooked? Yep. Um, one I just spoke about is our Spanish collection. Um, I would say at May, it was in a very weird section in the, in, I would say in the cut. So we just kind of recently moved it to where it's in a more visible um, location. And um, yeah, so that that's one that is kind of overlooked. And then another one that a lot of people don't use is our um, I call it beginning readers, but it's new readers collection and it's for adults who are just learning how to read. Um, people think it's just as easy as getting online and going online to learn how to read. But if you're struggling with literacy, you kind of need something you know, tangible, something you can hold. So it has different workbooks and things that you can work through to learn how to read. Um, so that's one that's often overlooked as well. And then um, I think this is your favorite um, <laughs> is often, Overlooked. A lot of people do use it, but you know, we always want more people to use it. And it's our Zoom Pass. Um, <laughs> our Zoom Pass is um, it's basically where the library we partner with different organizations to um, get um, to give the community tickets to like the Conservator Center and the zoo and Painted Grape and just it, it changes. You can always look on the website. Um, I will say the zoo is one of the most popular one. You have to call at the beginning of the month, the first of the month to kind of get your tickets for what whatever date you want for that month. It usually goes very quickly, um, but it's, it's a great resource to, um, to get out, to get in, um, to visit different businesses and organizations. Um, so yeah, that's another one that's overlooked a lot as well. Did y'all know about the Zoom Pass? <laughs> Erica is making fun of me because I just learned about the Zoom Pass a few, a few months ago because of Adrian Barr. And I have been talking to Erica Hill about this Zoom pass, like I'm still a child trying to go to the zoo because I'm so excited about it. If you have children that want to explore various things, not just in Alamance County, but in the state of North Carolina, check out that Zoom pass. Absolutely. Great information about it. Absolutely. Let's see. Books or resources have recently become available at Maine. Um, I would say a lot of our online resources. Um, I know, I hope I don't say this incorrectly. I think it's Fold 3. That is a, a an extension of Ancestry, which kind of focuses on, you know, like military history. Um, that's something fairly new that we just recently um, allow access to the public. Um, Lisa, she, she, if she was in here, she left, but she could give you a lot more information about it. It's super cool, um, but it, it specifically focuses on military history. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and um, Niche Academy, um, that's something that's fairly new. I don't know if we released that yet to the public, but it's, it's basically a platform that you can go to and do a lot of different tutorials and kind of learn about the library um, and various resources and things of that nature. Um, what else, what else would be super interesting to you guys? Um, we're going to talk about it. I'm sure we are, but the newest thing is going to be summer reading. Um, that, as you said, during the little break is, is June 13th through August 13th. Um, and it's basically summer program, kids get, you know, you read, you get incentive points, you get prizes. Um, and then if you read, I think up to a thousand points, you get put into a raffle for um, like a surprise gift basket um, that last year was a lot of cool stuff in that basket. So um, 
definitely encourage it, not just for children, it's for adults as well. Um, so a lot of cool programs, we're gonna be partnering with the Aquarium to do um, a special performance and another organization as well. So um, that's the biggest thing, biggest, newest, shiniest toy that we're um, kind of looking forward to um, this summer. Um, so yeah, those are some of the, the new books and resources. Um, and also you can always go online on our website um, to see you know, what's new and what's trending as far as new titles. We have a, a book river that kind of shows you know, what's popular. We have staff reads to, you can see what staff, you know, what we're reading as well. So um, all of that is available on our website. Wonderful. And so I love how you tried to play it like, oh, what new things might we possibly have? And then you just threw 15 things at us. Okay. All right, ma'am. <laughs> um, so I know one topic that's been heavy in the community and throughout the nation has been book. Um, and so I think that people sometimes think that if a book is banned for the school system, it's also banned for the library. So I know in Alamance County, we have something called book reconsideration. So can you talk about what that looks like and or if book banning applies to the libraries? Um, no, clearly the clear answer is no, but um, you know, we, I wanna make sure I'm saying this politically correct. Um, so we're not like the school system. Um, we don't follow a curriculum. Um, the library is open to everyone um, and we don't censor um, our materials. Um, but like you said, we do have a request for reconsideration of materials. And um, I kind of want to show you guys the form. And this can be found online as well. This is the form. So if you really have an issue with a, a title or um, we're kind of working on a display um, reconsideration type policy as well, um, but this one is for um, materials. So you basically, it's asking you questions on what type of material it is, like an audio book, a magazine, you know, whatever the case, a movie, the title, you know, um, basically asking you what you find is the issue with that particular title. Um, and then, um, and we also to, to, we want to get your input. So if you did have an issue with a particular title, is there another title that you think can address this issue in, in a different way that is more suitable for you or your family or your needs? Um, and when you fill this form out, it's a lengthy form, I'm not gonna lie to you. You sign it, you date it, and then it goes to um, the branch, the branch manager, and then that is Denver sent along to the um, director and then a group, a committee comes together, which is made up of the director, the associate director, the racial equity team, um, the different branch managers. So basically library management, we all come together and we discuss it. And um, ultimately the director makes the final decision, but we try to um, get everyone's opinion and weigh in on, you know, the issue and that director makes the final decision um, and she will follow up with the individual about the decision on if we can pull it or if we're not going to pull it and the reason why we're not going to pull it or the reason we did pull it whatever the case may be she follows up with that but just so you know generally we do not um ban materials we do not censor the library is a public place for for everyone Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, so now my second favorite thing after the Zoom class, mm -hmm. Erica knows, I love me a library card. Yes, you do. <laughs> love me a library card. So Erica, talk to our folks about how they can get a library card, if there's any citizenship restrictions or requirements, what does it look like if they can't come in person? Is there an alternate way to get a library card? Let's talk library. Okay, so let's start with the online 
aspect of it first. So if you could not get into the library, if you cannot come into the library, we do have an online form that you can fill out. Um, with that form, you know, you put in your basic information. You're not going too in depth because once you fill that out, when you make your online library card, you can place holds for materials um, and things of that nature. Um, but in order to get that actual physical library card, you will have to come into um, the library. Um, and basically all you need is a photo ID um, with your current address. Um, and children under the age of 17, they kind of fall under their parents. Um, but all you need is pretty much a, a photo ID um, in order for us to get that card um, processed for you. And I want to show you the actual physical form. Um, let's see if you guys can see it. And it basically asks last name, birthday, PIN number, um, the PIN number that you want to use for your library card, your address, your email, which way you would prefer to be contacted, like via email, phone, or text when you place holds. Um, and then you basically sign it as well. And if this is for a minor, you, um, you have to have your parents sign it. Um, and that will flow into something else as far as minors. If you, if your child um, attends um, any Alamance Burlington School, they, um, they have what we call ACPL Connect, and that kind of like automatically gives them a library card. So basically it's their lunch number and their PIN number is the last four digits of that lunch number. Um, so if they are in a um, Alamance Burlington School system, they, they already have a library card. Um, so that's the process for that. So you know, no citizenship requirements, um, just a, some sort of photo ID. Wonderful. Um, and so I think the last question that we have is, um, how can people learn more about May Memorial Library? What hours are you all open? And what if any COVID restrictions are in place at May Memorial? So that's like three questions, but yeah. it's all together. So we're going to treat it as one question. Yeah. That's about May Memorial. Okay. If you... I if you ever want to learn more about May, I would say your first step is our website. Our website has so much information, not just about May, about May Memorial, but about all of our libraries um, in Alamance County. Um, so I would say that's the first place to start. Second, come in. We love to see your smiling faces. Like I, that's, that's why I got into the field of library science because I love people. So if you really want to learn about, you know, ACPL and May Memorial, come in. I'm always here most times and I don't mind sitting down and talking with you as ask the customers here. I, I sit and chat and talk all the time and walk around and show people different things all the time. And then lastly, I'm gonna put this out here. Don't y'all don't take advantage of it, but you can call me. I promise you can call the library and say, can I speak to Erica? And I promise I will, they will find me and um, I will answer the phone and I will chat and talk with you. But um, those are the three things is the website come in and um, you know reach out to me. And I will say even my colleagues, most of them are, are like me. We, we love people, we love the patrons, we love this community um, and we don't mind taking the time to sit down and talk and chat so you can learn more about May Memorial and ACPL in general. Um, second part, our hours of operation for our, our who? So this gets a little complicated. So recently, probably the last year or so, we all got on a um, a consistent schedule. At first, it was kind of everywhere where different branches were open at different times. But for May, Graham, and Mebbin, we are open um, Monday through ooh, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. I mean, 10 a.m to 8 p.m. and on Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we're open on Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we're closed on Sunday. Um, that's fairly new. We, um, we used to be open seven days a week, but now we are closed on Sunday. Um, North Park, I believe they closed at seven on Fridays, but their schedule, I will say, look at the website to see North Park's hours because that can um, change and vary. And a part of the series, you're going to be, go you're going to be learning about North Park as well. And Alexa, she's wonderful. So she can give you more information about their hours and um, the Maple Bigelow Center and all of that good stuff. Um, and our mobile library and mobile cafe, they're kind of like, you know, you 
you set a schedule with them for them to come out to you. So that's wonderful. And one more thing I want to mention that we haven't quite got it installed, but it's, I, I would say give us a little bit of time, but we have um, remote lockers now at Graham. And basically it's pretty much a 24 hours holds pickup where you can place a hold and um, it'll be put in that remote locker in front of the Graham library and you can come pick it up at any time. The lockers, I, don't quote me, but I believe it's in the process of being installed and soon it will be available to the public. Um, so that's um, in the pipelines as well. Um, and then last question, are there any COVID restrictions in place? That is going to be per branch. I will say for May Memorial, we follow what the city of Burlington does. Um, I believe a couple of months ago, they lifted their mask mandate. Um, so we no longer have a mask mandate, but we always have masks at our information desk. Like we have tons of masks. So if you come in and you don't have a mask and you want a mask, Right when you walk in at the information desk, you can ask for one it's sitting on the desk. You can pick it up and take it. But as of now, we um, do not have a mask mandate and we don't have any COVID restrictions. Um, but if that was to change, we follow what the city of Burlington does. Thank you for that information. And good old Graham, did y'all hear that? <laughs> Wait, did y'all hear that part? Y'all don't have no excuse to not put a hold on some books, right? Wonderful, good talk. Glad we could discuss that. So I just want to take a moment to thank Erica and Lisa for all this great information that they've provided to us. As Erica said, next week we'll be talking about North Park and we'll have some great people here to talk about the Mako Bigelow Center and the North Park Library. So we hope to see you back next week. You can always catch the replay if you miss us on Wednesday evenings, but make sure you're commenting, you're sharing. And if you have any questions that you want me to ask, feel free to send me a Facebook message or leave them in the comments of the video and I'll get you an answer and respond to you at my earliest convenience. So again, thank you, Erica. Thank you, Lisa. I got I have one more thing. Oh, okay, can. one more thing, y'all. I think it's- Lisa a surprise, wanted me it. to share this with you guys. This is for our genealogy club that we have at May. Um, so we're basically having an author visit. Um, so the book is Sally Stalker, Educated Women, Woman of the New South. Um, so Dr. Carol Troxler will speak about her new book on the first female graduate of UNC Chapel Hill. It's going to be on Wednesday, June 8 at 2.30 here at May Memorial. Um, and this is the book. It's going to be a pretty cool Look program. there. Y'all are speaking all my languages. We got Zoom passes, library cards. We got hold lockers at remote lockers in Graham. And now we're talking about UNC. Go class of 2007. I, I see y'all out there. So um, I just want to thank you again, Erica. This was wonderful. Next week, we'll be back with information about North Park. Um, and so as I was saying, just make sure that you comment. If you have any questions, I'll get you answers and we'll take it from there. And remember that Erica said that you could call May Memorial Library and ask for Erica if yep. you have a concern. But she said, don't misuse that. I want to make sure that we highlight that don't misuse that because if y'all scare Erica off, she might not come back on the Discover Your Local Library series. And that would be very sad. Okay. So um, thank you all again. Everybody have a good evening and stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye.